welcome to our early morning commemoration. Um, I'm very aware that some of you may be here before you go to work for the day. Others may have got up particularly early for this event. Um, either way, it's the first once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to commemorate this event. Exactly 100 years ago, at exactly 7.30 a.m., the order was given to go over the top, signalling the beginning of one of the most fateful battles ever, and causing the needless death of many young innocent soldiers who joined up with their friends, perhaps members of their family, um, and many of whose names are on the plaques of the memorial that we're standing around this morning. It's a solemn occasion, but it's also an occasion to gather together and remember as a community the Battle of the Somme exactly 100 years ago. So welcome to that. Um, and I'm now going to pass over to the Reverend Paul Crabb. Today we remember all who experienced the Battle of the Somme. We started at 7.30 a.m on the 1st of July 1916 and continued into November 2009 continued into November 1916 when the battle had ended on the 18th of November more than a million men from both sides had been killed or wounded we remember those who faced the terrible waste and devastation who fought against all the odds who endured the clinging mud and the squalor of the trenches. We honor the loyalty shown to comrades and the bravery of those who overcame their fear, the courage of those who daily faced the pounding of the artillery, gunfire, and shrapnel. We remember those who survived the battle, but who returned wounded in body and mind. We remember the families and communities devastated by the loss of fathers, sons, brothers, grandfathers. We will never forget the dreadful cost of this battle, the anxiety on the home front, and the sacrifices that were made for our freedom. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. <laughs> people of Bramley, Robley and Stanningley who died during the 141 days of the Battle of the Song. 77 in total from our small area. At 7.30am on the 1st of July 1916, with actually slightly worse weather than we got this morning, the order to go over the top was given. On that first day of the Battle of the Song, 57,000 British servicemen were killed, wounded or missing. On average, 893 men died each day of the battle over the 141 days. 77 from our communities of Bramley, Stanley and Rodley died in the Battle of the Somme. 26 of them on this very day, 100 years ago. Of the 77, 34 have got no known grave other than the names inscribed on memorials. Amongst local men who fought in the song, Lance Sergeant Fred McNess was awarded the Victoria Cross. He won the Victoria Cross on the 15th of September, or the action where he won it was the 15th of 
September. That is two and a half months away from now, exactly. And at the moment when he won it, there was still another two months of local men dying in the battle to continue. We remember all of them, but I'd like to mention Lawrence Hector Kirk, who was originally from Hancock Lane. Lawrence was one of nine brothers who enlisted. Of the nine brothers who enlisted, three of them were killed, the last one dying of injuries uh, in early 1919. He was awarded the military medal, as was Sergeant George William Pemberton of Elder Road and Sergeant Matthew Mopson. Men from Westover Road and Town Street within 100 yards of where this memorial is fell, as well as stunningly born Private George Granger. George actually emigrated, enlisted in Australia and came to France to die. The youngest was 18, Lance Corporal William Hilbert Allen of Lee House Stanley, and the oldest was Private Alexander Wood, who was 37. I will now hand over to Nora, who will do a short reading. Thank you. Men fought and died in terrible conditions in this war, and we can hardly imagine what it was like. At the end of the first day, the West Yorkshire Battalion was almost totally wiped out. There were 710 casualties, with 426 of these dead that on the first day. What the remnants of the battalion experienced as that day came to an end, has been written down. Behind the sickening, gas-soaked mist, in the forefront of the noise that raged at them from every horizon, a small party of the West Yorkshires became aware of another sound. It was like nothing they had ever heard before. Later, and for the rest of his life, the lieutenant remembered it as a sound that chilled the blood. A nerve-scraping noise, like a 